Hello and welcome back to Wash Gardener and this time I'm going to be turning this bed here where it was once shaded by a willow tree that had fallen over. So I cut that down and now I've got this little bed here to put some of my home propagated ornamentals in. So I've got this which is a lupin which I grew from seed and then I've got these three well, three of these ornamental grasses which I grew from a cutting from my uh, where there's a main plant that I've got that I've cut from and then I've also got here some ivy and wallflower cuttings the wallflower isn't rooted yet but the ivies they're ready to go in and I'll be draping over this wall here to try and hide some of the concrete bricks that are here because they're quite ugly in my opinion so I'm I'm going to use these grasses because they're quite, well when it gets bigger and it spreads it sort of rustles in the wind and I like the noise of it. And then the lupins, I've got some more lupins over there as well. And lupins are just one of my favourite flowers, I just love them, they're spiring up flowers in the summer. So let's get planting, I'll show you what we're working with here. Uh, and then I'll go and show you me taking some of my flowers out of my propagation bed over there. So this here, this is the bed. The willow's trying to grow back there next to my greenhouse, but we're just going to have to keep it in control. So the ivy goes there, I have them draping over this wall here to try and hide it a bit and it will just soften the, this whole backdrop here, because this is it at the moment. And then it goes out to the view of the Priscelli Mountains, so it'll go soften into the backfield then, with the lupins and all the sort of cottagey garden type things that I've got to plant here and now I've got a question for you all so these bricks and slabs here so I pulled them out of here when I was clearing out the wall and clearing out this so I could plant stuff and I'm going to ask you I've got this bench as well do I turn this muddy area here into lawn or shall I turn it into a little patio using those bricks and things where I can have this bench and we can sit next to all the flowers so if you comment below what you think of that and that will be really appreciated and whatever we decide I'll do a video on doing that on this holiday because I'm on the summer holiday so this here is my propagation bed there's my pumpkin there but I've got a propagation bed here where I've got I think four lupins four or five lupins and then there they need to get a bit bigger first but that's uh, the grassy type thing there that's a um, it's a dwarf nephrophia, I think it's how you pronounce it in Latin, but it's a dwarf red hot poker, which I've got one over here, I'll show you now. So that's what this is here. And there's a flower coming on it there as well. So those can go along with the lupins and it will really soften that edge up. So let's go and take the lupins out of that bed over there and bring them across. So I've got two pots here to move them across because I've got one looping over there already I'm only picking two because in designing gardens there's a rule where you should only ever plant in odd numbers because it sort of always looks better and even numbers don't always look great together I find two can be okay but any more than two in even numbers isn't great to have together so I always plant in odd numbers as I've heard some other people say so let's take this netting off that's to stop any animals like birds to damage my plants and peck the leaves so I'll just cut a pot shape out of it to get a good root bowl going so I grew these from seed as well these were uh, grown in that that video a few months ago a couple of months ago I think now where I was planting seeds that I got from RHS Wisley Garden Centre they were lupin seeds and these are going to be blue, white or purple I think if I can remember these were only planted into this bed recently so if there's not many roots then it's, that must be why but they have grown quite well as you can see here So there, I've planted them out. Let's put the netting back over. Let's go back over 
and plant them into the bed in an arrangement. So we're going to start with the lupins that I've got. I've got three lupins here. So I'm thinking I'm going to have this bigger one. This, they're the same ones, but they're just, this one's older than the others. So I'm going to have this bigger one in the front and these two slightly behind here. And then I'll have maybe the grasses, one here and one here, and then one in the back there, but that won't get much light. So I can always, always leave one grass out, so I might just have one grass here, one grass there. And then I'll put the little ivies in the front here, so they can drapes over this wall here and soften that. So let's, I think, put the grasses in place and we'll see how it all looks. So I'll just get up and get the grasses now. So I'll put this one here. I'm designing flower beds and stuff is all about trial and error, really. So I think that looks all right there. So I'm see if this one, or I don't think that'll get much light once this is bigger. So what I might do, is there some sort of iris or some type of grass type flower here, over here ready, and I'll put a little edge in. So I hopefully, well, I might not have to use this grass, I'll just leave it at two. And that's why I was saying that two can work where sometimes even numbers don't work. So then I'll put an ivy in here and another ivy in over here. And I think that look lovely. So let's get planting. So I'll plant these little ivies first. These, I can't remember, I don't really know the names for these ones, sorry, but I know that they are an ivy, definitely. So I'll train that to drapes over the side. These are only little. These are cuttings from a big ivy as well, like the dwarf red hot pokers we're cutting from a big plant. Yeah, they can be fine there. And then this one in the middle. I'll push it down to make an imprint there. There. So I can put the soil there. I'll just take that out. I'll take all the crocs out as well. The old terracotta. See, this has been pot bound for a while, so it'll probably love getting out into the soil like this. So if I put that in there, that's perfect depth. So I'll put that in soil. Oh no. Put that back in there. This soil is quite good actually compared to what I thought it was going to be like because it's got lots of rotten willow leaves in it from in autumn when the willow used to go dormant. So it's actually quite good soil, surprisingly. It's quite rocky though because people who used to live in this house, they used to dump all of their rubbish into the back bank here because well, it was allowed then and they didn't really know the impact of everything. So that's why there's so many rocks and bits of glass and china and stuff in this. So let's get the trowel here. And I'll dig in the lupins, the smaller ones. Our soil isn't great here anyway, so I've just got to put up with it, but it's not bad. It go, almost goes straight to shale and bedrock. Firm it in well. Don't want any air around those roots. So that's another one in. 
I'm not sure why the leaves are different on this one and that one because they're both the same variety I believe but it could just be that they're one's older than the other Turn that in Whilst I'm doing this, it might be nice to speak about why I'm doing YouTube, because some of you might be wondering that. So the reason I started YouTube is because my dream is to become a gardening TV presenter and be on the television. And as a lot of you might know already, I've already been on Welsh TV on S4C, on Gareth Yarmwy. Uh, that was the start of last month I did that. So yeah, I want to become a gardening television presenter really. And I'm going to try my best to get on it as young as I can, so I can get started young. So that's why I started in YouTube, because it's a good portfolio for people to look at. And I also have a passion to try and teach people gardening and how to grow food. So that's the reason why I garden, if any of you are wondering. So I'll just dig my hole for the grass. Now this one, and then that'll be the last of them. There, yeah, so those grasses will do well there. This is my little ivy here. It's one of the big leaves just snapped off of it, I realised. So, hopefully that'll be fine. I've got another one. I might put another one of my little seedlings. Because it looks healthier than this one. I'll put this one back in its tray to recover. This one's a lot bigger. So that's everything planted now. Now what I might do is I'm going to go and get some shell, crushed whelk shells from Shell on Earth and I'll be back in a second. So I'll put them around my plants to stop slug, but slug damage naturally. So if you want to get some shells from Shell on Earth, then I'll leave a link in the description below and you can go and buy your own because they're amazing. They're really good for putting aeration in succulent pots, so succulent soil. They can aerate soil with anything really and you can use them as slug protection. You can even use them as grit and a source of calcium for chickens. So if any of you keep chickens, then it would be a good investment and it would also help a business that's quite local to me as well. So I'll just go and get those shells and I'll be back in a second. So here it is, I've got my pack of crooks, crushed whelk shells from Shell on Earth. Now, what you do with these... Well, I'll show you them first. So that's them. So they're quite fine. And what I'm going to do is because uh, the slugs quite like the... Uh, Lupins, so I'm just gonna lay a trail of these around, and it'll also add some calcium to the soil and it'll also just aerate the soil over time. So, this will stop the slugs, and it's quite effective at stopping slugs. I've seen online, I haven't quite used it for slugs for me yet, but this is my first time, and it looks really nice as well. It's a good decorational mulch to put around pots as well. In fact, that's what I might do after, so I'll show you me putting it as a decorational mulch around some plants. And the slugs don't go over this because they don't like the sharp edges of it. 
so it'll put them off going to your plants. There, so they're the plants that can be most susceptible to slug damage, and I've covered them. So now, let's go and I'll show you me putting decoration on that pot, but I finished this bed, so I'll do show you some shots of that now. And then we'll go, and I'll go and put this, these shells, around some pots, and some other plants as well. So here's something I can use my shells for, which is, this is a fern I've got which I can't remember the name of it, I can't remember the name of most of my plants, sorry because I'm very forgetful like that <laughs> but I'm gonna weed here, put scissors in which is just like a bed like I've done over there but smaller I'm gonna weed this, to put the weeds on the back there and then I'll put some shells around it as a mulch to make it look a lot better because so as you see, before I knew shells were a thing I'd use potting grit but I think shells will do a better job of this and they'll look a lot nicer, they'll make it stand out more. So as I was saying, with Shell and Earth, they're a, a brand of, where well, they, it's their waste product, the shells, for their whelk factory in the seaside town of Newquay which is in West Wales, near me. And they, all their waste shell, well, whelk shells, they crush up and clean, and they package them in these lovely packets, like this. Or you can get bigger bags as well. And then they sell them on their online shop or in garden centres all around the UK now. It's uh, amazing, so I'll, Leave a link to the thing down the below, their page. And I'll also, there's another video that I did where I interviewed Carol, who does Shell on Earth. And yeah, you can watch that as well if you want. I'll leave it up in the corner, whichever side. So now I'm ready. I've taken most of the weeds out. I can just put this on as a mulch. Alfie's just trying to eat the shells now that I put around to stop the slug. He's a Labrador though, so we can't really blame him. If you're going to be doing a lot of mulches like this, I'd recommend you buy the bigger bag off them because it's good, it lasts for longer. Hold on, let me just stop Alfie. No, you're not allowed to do that. Do you want to see how the panda? Okay. Here's Alfie, everyone. Alfie. Look, look over there. Look Alfie. Look there. Oh no, he's not going to look at the camera. He does help me out in the garden, but he's also, as you can see now, blocking the camera, which is all, he's also good at. Thank you. He also helps by digging random holes in the lawn as well, don't you, Alfie? So hopefully this will look a lot brighter and the soil, well not the soil but the mulch will stand out a lot more than potting grit. I no. You're not allowed to eat it after. Nope. Keep it. Try and distract yourself after. Alfie just can't resi resist eating anything because he's a golden retriever cost Labrador. So 
He just eats anything that he sees. Oi, Alfie, no. I've told you off too many times now. There we go, that's looking lovely now. So, I'll just... Do that for now. And then I'll show you that. So look, there we go. Looks lovely. And then there's the sh uh, slug protection over there. And here's Alfie who was eating it all. So... Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time, which will be more frequently, hopefully daily, maybe every other day this holiday. And I'm going to be doing videos, as many as I can, this holiday. So, what I'm going to be doing is, I reckon, if, I, if you can get me to 300 subscribers by September, then I'm going to give away a plant that I propagated from my garden. So that's, if you get to 300 subscribers, me to 300 subscribers then I'll give you a shout out and I will give you one of the plants that I propagate from my garden whenever I've got any good ones for you so thank you for watching I hope to see you next time